it's interesting, isn't it? We need such a huge amount of rain to support the abundance of life in places like this. The vast array of rare mosses, lichens, liverworts, ferns, etc. And yet today, I find myself in a rainforest without any rain whatsoever. It's completely dry. It's mild, there's barely any wind, the sun's trying to come out and it's made such a huge difference. Everything's so much flatter and it's lost its luster compared to two days ago. Uh, so I think it's gonna make it very challenging. You know, we're never happy as photographers, are we? Because if I was here on a holiday, I'd be loving this. You know, it's still beautiful, the birds are singing, um, but I've accepted the fact that I'm not going to get any mist or fog this week. But I don't think it's too much to ask to want rain in a rainforest, is it? <laughs> you know, such so much lushness in the understory here and all the different plant life's growing on the trees as well. And the different hues of yellow and green and all that comes to life when it's wet. Um, I'm surprised just how much of a difference it makes. And it helps, helps to add depth and something for the light to bounce off as well. So without that, I think I'm really going to struggle. So I'm going to use the opportunity to explore as usual, try to find some nice compositions and obviously just enjoy being here. Perhaps take the opportunity to uh, explore somewhere new as well, go to a different location. So yes, it's going to be a challenge, um, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, and I think there's, there might be some rain coming tomorrow. Fingers crossed. It's now 20 past seven in the evening. It's a beautiful evening, but the reason why we're fast forwarded by 10 hours is because I recorded a piece to camera this morning and then had some technical issues, which means I haven't got any filming done. I did scout around for a couple of hours, found a few things that I quite like the look of, and the light's now a bit softer. Um, it's still very, very dry. So I did take the opportunity to go back to the cabin and just relax. I just kind of reset, listened to some podcast, podcast made some food and yeah, feeling much better for it, to be honest. Um, so I want to show you this scene here, which yes, it's crying out for a, a very damp, murky morning, but compositionally, I think it's worth just showing anyway as, as just a concept, another one of these images that I'll keep in the back of my mind because there's a lot going on. And that's why I like it, because in this woodland, like so many woodlands, there's a lot going on. We've got a whole mixture of species, different colours, textures, um, and different layers as well as helping to add depth in this image. So I was initially concerned about this huge fallen branch here. Well, it would have been the, the trunk of a main tree at one point. And um, because I didn't really like the feeling of that protruding into the image, but actually, the, the life that's on it, the different bits of grasses and flowers and mosses and things are a really nice feature. But the reason why I think I can get away with it and it works is because it's balanced with the fallen branches also covered in a lot of life over on the left hand side. But actually as we look through the scene and it opens out in the distance there, it kind of gets a bit darker. Then it gets lighter in the background where there's more fallen logs, more moss, which is catching the light. So we're actually building up depth, not only with those repeated patterns of uh, dead wood, but also by having light, then dark, then light, and then dark again. Um, so despite the very bland conditions, there is still a bit of depth there. That thing that I do love in woodland images, which is a meander for the eyes. Um, something that doesn't necessarily work on some of the social media platforms, but see the image bigger and it's just a, a really nice, enjoyable experience just to wander around the image with your eyes. 16 by 9, nice cinematic uh, view. I originally started with this composition as a, a bit of B-roll and I thought, actually, that's quite nice. I have to take a photograph of that as well. So uh, compositionally, see what you think of it.
I love it when this happens. This alder tree, oh, I'm sinking here, it's very boggy. <laughs> this very nice alder tree here, which is arching over to the left, was one of the main feature trees, one of the most characterful ones in the last image. Um, and this is a composition that I scouted out earlier, and I think it looks really nice. You know, there's more elements, more subjects in this one that were in that last image, but it's a different angle, has a very similar feeling. We have more deadfall again. We've got a feeling of depth looking down at the, the hazel and the oaks back there. Nice kind of rich green, boggy understory. A few flowers popping up here and there, being careful not to tread on them. Um, but straight away, I've got two images that are related to each other. Um, so side by side will work very well. So we're starting to kind of build up sequences, starting to build up a, you know, a group of images, a cohesive kind of body of work, hopefully, ultimately, from, from this woodland. So uh, yeah, need to get an image of this one, I think. There's something about this scene that I really like, even if the conditions were particularly good, it'll still have a quietness about it, um, but it just has some elements which come together in a way which for me is appealing these days, and I do quite like quieter images and just things that speak for, not for me, um, but for the location. Your perception of that could be very, very different to mine. It's different between, you know, every single person. That's what makes photography so special, I think. But uh, yeah, I think even under these, these very flat conditions, there's still something about it. And I think it's the, it's the algae in the, the extremities of the trees in the canopy. It was kind of like silvery. And that just creates a very kind of soft effect at the top of the frame, which is balanced very nicely with a very soft green at the base. Now there's, is it birch? I think it's birch down here. Can't tell from the distance, but I think their birch leaves appear in there. Um, and the way they're just emerging is balancing um, with the foliage at the base of the tree here. Why is the name just escaped me what that foliage is? That's annoying. Go on, thanks, Aaron. Anyway, bilberry. Um, so the bilberry and the moss at the base of the, the oak tree here is very balanced with the leaves on the birch trees. Um, but then the way some of the trees kind of reach up and the way they, they meet the arrangement of the trees, the separation of the trees, the silvery effect and that very kind of pale pastel green. Um, there's something very soft um, and appealing to it for me, all anchored with this much bolder oak tree on the right hand side and just a sneaky peek of the stream down in the bottom there. So anyway, yeah, four by three, another one for me to consider in the future because I just I want to come back and throughout all the seasons approach this exactly the same as what I would if I was photographing locally observe it through the seasons and learn from that process and figure out which compositions work best at what time of year what conditions etc etc so yeah yeah anyway I'm loving this if you can't tell oh uh, yeah I love I love a new location anyway right moving on
Check this out. This is a really good find, actually. This is a lichen called lungwort, I believe, uh, which is a symbiotic relationship between fungus and algae. And it's quite rare, actually. It used to be more widespread, but because of reduction in air quality, it's been pushed more towards the western extremities of the UK. And it's a good thing to look out for, because if you find it, then it's an indicator that you're in an ancient woodland and possibly that you're in an Atlantic rainforest such as this one. So yeah, really chuffed to have spotted such a mass of it because I saw a small patch down there which encouraged me to delve a little bit deeper and this is absolutely covered in the stuff. When you take a close look, um, it's got all these little orange spots on it which looks a bit odd, like it's, like it's a disease or something. Um, but they're actually the fruiting bodies of the lichen. So it's, yeah, it's really cool. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, dog lichen at the bottom of there as well. Um, but it's thought to have medicinal properties to help lung disease, uh, hence the name lungwort. Um, but yeah, yeah, really chuffed to have found that. It's a bit crispy at the minute because uh, it's so dry. Um, but as soon as it rains, it'll kind of soak it up. It'll become soft and shiny and come into its own really. So yeah, that's a really good find. So keep your eyes peeled. Well, doesn't time fly when you're having fun? I can't believe this is my last full day exploring this, what is actually a very small remnant of Atlantic rainforest. Uh, in typical fashion, I've taken a very relaxed approach to my work, uh, not worrying too much if I'm not making images. I don't take images for the sake of it. I have a very clear vision of what I want to achieve and nothing else will do, to be honest. So as we have another very kind of bright and dry day and throw some wind into the mix, I've decided just to explore a little bit more, record some B-roll and get into some more nooks and crannies. And I've just come across these, this trio of beasts. Uh, beautiful mossy characters, all set against the darkness of the carnivorous plantation. It's a bit of a shame really that there is such a massive expanse of plantation, all at the expense of the native forest. Um, but in this instance, I guess these three here stand as surviving relics. Um, they're, they're quite beastly actually, you know, they're so festooned in lichens and moss um, and have a very kind of imposing character about them. But in juxtaposition to that, which is what I really quite like, is you've got the delicate ferns. But I don't know if you can see on the branch there, I'll show some detail, but there's some woodland and enemies just growing on it, just very graceful and delicate on there. And that's what's so fantastic actually about these rainforests is that you get this plant life uh, growing in the treetops and it's kind of creating like an elevated carbon store, if you like, because it develops its own sort of ecosystem and soil builds up and you get these wonderful plants growing in the canopy. Um, so I am going to make, it's it, obviously not the conditions that I want for these particular trees, but I'm going to make an image in anywhere just to practice composition and get a, a record of these so I remember to come back on a different day. But yeah, this angle looks pretty good actually. I'll explore it a little bit more, hop over to the other side and uh, yeah, have a little play with it. This episode has been brought to you with the kind support of my patrons. If you'd like to support this channel and my photography projects, then please go to patreon.com forward slash Simon Baxter, or see the support page on my website for other ways of helping me to create authentic and original content. Thank you very much for watching. Please click the like button and leave a comment, and I hope to see you again very soon.